Seth and I have been adventuring together for many years. We climbed Mount Rainier together. We summited the Grand Teton. And we paddled the Upper Missouri River following the journey of Lewis and Clark. But it's been since 2017 in Switzerland that we've been on an adventure together. In addition to the pandemic, 2021 threw in a few extra curveballs. Snow is crunchy. Well, I uh, slipped and fell, slammed into a tree, swollen, not sure how bad it is. It was bad. And so this tendon is kind of split like this. My foot required surgery. And then the long recovery began. By the end of April, I was finally walking again. On July 15th, two weeks before our trip, Seth was body surfing in San Diego and was stung in the foot by a stingray. The ray's barbed tail shot his foot full of venom and left him with a deep stab wound. Seth's foot was swollen and walking was painful. As the date for our adventure approached, in addition to being physically off kilter, there were many questions. Can you jump right back in the saddle of the outdoors? Do the skills come back like before? Can it be just as easy as picking up where you left off with an old friend? We certainly hope so. Seth flew into Seattle mid-afternoon and we sorted gear at the trailhead. We then hopped on our bikes, but the ride lasted for less than a mile before mishap. Well, the bike broke. Snappo, no chain. So fashion. And walk up the road. With no other choice, we set out walking up the road. Our destination lay in the Alpine Lakes Wilderness. We started from North Bend, driving up the Middle Fork Road, and then a bumpy logging road to Dinkford Creek, where we had sorted gear. We were now walking the first eight miles that we should have biked. From there, we would keep hiking up the Dutch Miller Trail to our high camp deep in the Alpine Lakes Wilderness on the flanks of Overcoat Peak. Our approach up the middle fork of the Snoqualmie River is along the largest of the three forks of the Snoqualmie and is the least developed, containing lush valleys of fern and forest and towering mountains of wild country. The road sucked, but now that we are on this trail, it is so much nicer. As the light slowly faded to dark, we made our way into horse camp at the Dutch Miller Trailhead for our first night's rest. Morning chores start out with getting water. In the Cascades, there's always plenty. I make a point in the back country to try to bring good food. Our breakfast this first morning was bacon that I had brought in frozen and then some pancakes with a bit of syrup. Yeah, that's good. It was a beautiful summer morning hiking up the Dutch Miller Trail. One of those halcyon days full of sunshine. Falling back into the rhythm of adventure where you put one foot in front of another. Moving into the wild easy conversations about past trips and future plans. The pull of normal life slowly fades away as we enter the backcountry flow. The chest-high ferns cover the open country in between the forests. Bright green fronds dip and bend as we made our way through. Crossing many creeks, the trail climbs steadily along boardwalks, past peaks, meadows, and waterfalls. At lunch, we arrived at Pedro's camp in a large meadow with a nice large pond of water. 
We stopped and stripped for a dip to cool off and refresh. We finished off lunch with a great bagel sandwich. The next leg of our journey started with us heading off trail searching for the entrance to the Valley of the Chiefs. The uncertainty of the route started to nag with a subtle anxiety of which way to go. You there yet? This was tempered by the adventure of it all, as I remember how much we loved this kind of thing. The rustiness fell away and we began to transition into the alpine zone. Eventually the vegetation gave way and the mouth of the valley turns from a mass of boulders to an open stream bed. As we ascended, the slopes got steeper and we ran into snow. We kept climbing and climbing putting one foot in front of another. Heading up the pass. Eventually we reached the top of the pass. Rounding the bend, we got our first view of the awe-inspiring Chimney Rock. From here our objective was to traverse along the ridge and find a way through and across the ledges. Yeah, that does not go, and no part of that goes, we gotta go higher. so we got to go high, and I think, you know, it's up in there. Be careful. Yeah. We found the ledges, but with late afternoon coming on, at the end of an already long day and with heavy packs, we opted to stop instead of carry on. Our high camp was a heather ledge from across the mighty Summit Chief. We melted some snow and cooked up some dinner. Let's just say the bugs were bad. That evening we climbed to the top of the ridge to watch the sunset over the peaks of the Alpine Lakes. We contemplated those ledges which appeared daunting with our heavy packs. That night, I didn't sleep well as I thought about how we were going to get across them in the morning. Summit day, we woke up with some remaining trepidation about the ledges. As I rubbed my aching foot with arthritis cream, I thought about what we'd do if we were too sketched out to make it through. Maybe we could retreat down to Pete Lake with our tails between our legs. We had some breakfast and loaded up our lighter summit packs. Seth set out on recon, looking for a way across the ledges. Climbing high, he found an upper ledge that went easy with some overhanging cliffs. What had been daunting the night before passed as almost an afterthought. All the difference made by a night's sleep easy packs and a fresh perspective. All right, we came along this ridge here and in the dark shadows right up near that green spot which you clearly can't see because it's backlit but just above that tree to the left. We kept descending the ridge looking for the transition from rock to ice.
As we reached the glacier, we put on our crampons and started across. Such awe-inspiring scenery among the towering peaks and chimney and overcoat. We made our way along the base of Overcoat and around to the Snowfinger. Snowfinger sits deep between two rock gullies, doesn't get a lot of full sun, and provides steep but straightforward access to the rock. Ascending felt pretty stable as long as we kicked steps and took our time. At the top of the snow finger, we made the transition to rock. Seth led as he has on every climb we've done together. All, All right, sitting on the heather ledge thinking that we just got to go up the heather ledges to the summit. We shall see. We started scrambling up the steep heather ledges and quicker than I thought we ran out of mountain and we were at the top. Overcoat. Overcome. We posed for a summit photo and triumphantly signed the summit register. We were only the fifth party to sign the register since 2013. We took a nice long break in the sun and then started our descent back to the top of the snow finger. That's it, huh? Hup, rope. All right. Yeah. Now we just gotta go down the mighty snow finger. All right. While it is still raw, what was the snow slope like? It was really, really hard. Um, like an hour to descend. It took us an hour to descend. I don't even I don't even want to think about how far it was. It wasn't that long, but it just didn't stop. Because every every single footstep you just had to concentrate. Any step that blew, you were just gonna slide out of control. It was like a no-fall zone. And it was just so tense for an hour. Just on. High adrenaline, high consequence, high focus. High energy. Zero. Uh, definitely type three. Fun. Like three and a half. Yes. It's just so arduous. I just just drained me just having to concentrate that hard. And for something that you think, oh, it's only 45 degrees, 50 degrees. But it, it was it was steep. Yeah. But we're down, and now to get some water. It's water time. And then get to camp. At the foot of the glacier, exhausted from the down climb, we drank and drank our fill. As we traversed the ledges and arrived back at camp, there was an immense feeling of safety and relief.
We were exhausted, but satisfied with our success. And dinner never tasted so good. It was nice just to lay around camp and eat and watch the sun go down. The next day began the two-day journey of getting home. Uneventful in terms of the unknown or the danger, but with many things still to look forward to. This time traversing down the beautiful Valley of the Chiefs. Though that bushwhacking to get back to the trail is always fun. Hey, no Devil's Club. And of course, anytime you have a chance to jump in a cold body of water, it's a mountain adventure requirement. Mackerel, burrito. A delicious lunch of Patagonia provisions definitely hit the spot. That's mm. like gourmet mm. tuna. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then the last miles down the Dutch Miller Trail back to horse camp where we quickly fell asleep. On our last day, we woke up to a slight drizzle. Some warm breakfast fueled us as we started on those last miles. Those last miles can seem to go on forever. All conversation stops and you just put one foot in front of the other. feet hurt, you just want the trail to end, ah! you keep looking at the map and how long you have left. Finally we got the bikes and back at the truck, we stopped at the river for one last cleanup before the return to civilization and food. In the end, we got right back in the saddle and found it just as comfortable and uncomfortable as we hoped. We saw some amazing high country, bagged a classic Northwest summit, and made it back home safe and sound. Can't wait to do it again.